Welcome to the R video tutorial on One Way ANOVA in R Part 3. This is part of Statistics 321 at Virginia Commonwealth University, but anybody's free to use it. Okay, we're going to pick up where we left off from Part 2, so I'm just going to run down real quick what we've did before. So we read in the Cycler CPK.csv dataset, which is linked in the repository, which is in the description below, a link to it. Uh, here we've ran the head, we've ran a box plot, we ran an ANOVA, and we ran the two keys, uh, honestly significant difference procedure. And what we want to do here is we want to continue on by doing other possible multiple comparison procedures. So multiple comparison procedures. And basically these are all trying to uh, avoid making a type 1 error by controlling the experiment-wise error rate. So the first thing we're going to do is pairwise t-test. This is what most of these are uh, wrapped up in. So we're going to put in our data, not the ANOVA. So cycler1, dollar sign, cpk1, and our grouping variable, which is cycler1, dollar sign, treatment. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put in the p-adjust method. So p-adjust method and there's a variety of these that you can choose from in the p adjust methods so the first thing we're going to do is just none okay so i'm actually going to be explicit and put in here none so this is going to do all pairwise t-tests and we'll see what this produces okay so if we did this you get this little matrix out it says high to low here's the p-value it's small here is medium to high and you can see the p-value it's big and so on and you can look at each one of these and you'll see you get a little bit of a different answer between each of the methods now what we're going to do now is just copy and paste this so we can see other ones so for example if we want to know bonferroni correction so we can do bonferroni and I think that's two R's in there. Uh, we'll just paste this. And then all we have to do is type in here as our method, Bonferroni. If I can spell it again. And I'm going to put this on the second line down just to make it easier to read. And if you run this one, you'll see the answer changes probably on this one. This none to low here, it looks like it is significant with a p-value of 0 0.036. If I run here, I get a p-value of 0 0.21, which nobody would consider significant unless they were willing to be wrong 20% of the time. Uh, so the p-values do change when you do this, if you do a Bonferroni correction. Uh, the one above with none, if you did it a no beforehand, this would be considered to Fisher's least significant difference. All right, and we'll look through one more type that we can do with this, which is the uh, what's called often the Hochberg or Benjaminini Hochberg test. Uh, that's another version of this uh, that's common. So let me see if I can spell this right. Benjamini and Hochberg. So this is another test that you could do. And you can either use BH as the keyword or you can use i believe there's another one that you can use fdr uh, so we're going to do bh for benjaminini hochberg and this will produce another table like this and we'll see how these p-values change on these differences okay now this one here is bigger than our original none but it wasn't nearly as small or nearly as large as the one for Bonferroni. So keep that in mind that these are going to produce different results. And what I highly recommend people do is pick which one you're going to do ahead of time. Then stick with it. Don't be searching for the one that gives you what you want. Use the one that is most appropriate for your question at the time and stick with it. Uh, a lot of people try to sort of fudge a method by finding the method that they agree with. Don't do that. Pick one, stick with it. Don't look at the others. All right, so we've looked at more multiple comparison procedures, and now we can move on to the next video and look at assumptions.